Happy Thursday and welcome to your weekly briefing on SWBN is Watch. I am Chimela Chiki. Thanks for joining us tonight. In what has been described as a historic and groundbreaking move, Standard World Broadcasting Network, SWBN, for the first time collaborated with Abbasiama Timothy and the Eastern Region House Fellowships to host the lead concert. Many describe the league concert as a glorious and refreshing time in God's presence. Believers traveled across Nigeria to be part of the 2023 edition of the league concert in Calabar, Cross River State. The gathered audience participated in over three hours of intense worship and prophetic declaration of God's word. Seasoned ministers like Brother Chibuna Izinwa, who came all the way from Lagos, Nigeria, talked to the gathered audience on the essence of worship. So when we come to worship him, it's not razzmatazz. We are deliberate. We are conscious. We know what we want to achieve. We know that if he doesn't show up, we don't know what might happen next. So there was a time he was not around. And it is called a cupboard. Brother Emeka Mordi, who journeyed from Delta State, Nigeria, led the audience into an atmosphere of prophetic worship. Different soul conditions were addressed, and people received direct words of counsel and healing under the prophetic cloud. At the time of making this report, the lead concert had garnered over 1.4K views and counting. Gloria Lamigoke, who joined online, told the SWPN community that, quote, the lead concert was such a beautiful and powerful time in the Lord's presence. He went on to pray for the Lord's blessings and everyone involved while expressing his wish that the concert be, quote, held once a month. But of course, as the Lord wills, still reacting to the outcome of the concert, the co-chair of the SWBN board, Sister Udeme Anosike, told the SWBN community that the league concert was a powerful time. In her words, I was so blessed. Moreover, the chair to the SWBM board, Brother Gideon Fonabasi, told the audience at the lead concert that this was a beautiful outing, while announcing that the SWBM week was coming and it was going to be explosive. The lead concert was founded by Brother Basiama Timothy of Calabar House Fellowship. Timothy is a talented worshiper and guitarist who has produced several albums, including the popular song, I'm not naked. In a written note, he thanked everyone for the success of the concert. Have you seen the lead concert yet? If you haven't, you're missing a lot. I know you want to get on to the lead concert right away, but hang on for the next story. Now to our next highlight, we hate to change your mood, but this story is very important to our brethren undergoing intense persecution, so stay with us. Our next story is an update on the ongoing blockade in Nargono, Karbak, which has entered its fifth month, leaving thousands of Armenian Christians in life-threatening conditions. As previously reported, the Lachin Corridor has been blocked since December last year, preventing essential supplies from entering or leaving the region. The Lachin Corridor is the only road that connects Nagorno Karabakh to the Republic of Armenia. It has often been described as a lifeline to and for residents of Nagorno Karabakh. Problems between Armenia and Azerbaijan have historic roots, with uh, the blockage uh, of the Lachin Corridor becoming the latest rift over the disputed Nagorno Karabakh territory, considered by Armenian Christians to be their homeland. Describing the situation as a human and catastrophe. Joe Vatkamp, head of international communications at Christian Solidarity International, explained that Armenian Christians feel very alone and forgotten as they face racial and religious hatred. Vatkamp recently visited Armenia and collected first hand stories from Armenian Christian families who were forced to flee their homes when Azerbaijan attacked their homeland three years ago. He believes this blockade has caused uncertainty among Armenian Christians who are unsure whether they will be able to stay in their homeland or if their nation will survive. The situation on the Latin Corridor remains tense as over 120,000 ethnic Armenians rely on the road for food, medicine and other vital supplies and necessities that the population needs to survive. Stay tuned for more updates on the SWBN News Watch. 
Let's go back to Nigeria. Multiple media outlets around the story you're about to hear, and it raised a lot of dust. From what we have been able to gather, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, also known as RCCG, Pastor Enoch Adeboye, allegedly said that Nigeria will prosper under the incoming administration of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He allegedly said Tinubu can fix Nigeria with God's help while urging the president elect to fulfill Nigerians dream of a new nation. Adiboye, who was represented by special assistant Pastor Dele Balogun, spoke at the monthly Thanksgiving service at the RCCG. He said, and I quote, let us pray for the incoming government that God will support it and give it the grace to do the right thing. Thank God the president-elect has promised to fix Nigeria. If God helps him, Nigeria will prosper in his hands. Reacting to this development, Nigerian disc jockey Obianuju Catherine Ude, popularly known as uh, DG Switch, expressed her displeasure in a tweet where she explained that Pastor Adeboye, who was mute during the injustices mounted against Nigerians by his best friends in the ruling All Progressive Congress, APC, has suddenly found his voice and now wants God to help Tinubu fix Nigeria. She said, one day the cleric and his cohorts will show Nigerians the God they are always referring to. DJ Switch was not the only one who was offended by the conduct of the respected general overseer. One Lagos brother who spoke to us anonymously recalled how Adeboye kept silent during the racial tensions against the Igbos in Lagos. He argued that, quote, one component of God's justice system is to stand for the oppressed. He didn't do any of that. He didn't as much say a word. It was disappointing, end of quote. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter B, has described as most unacceptable attacks on the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboye. The former governor of Anambra State said some people are masquerading as his followers to rain insults on the 81-year-old cleric. Obi condemned the use of subterfuge, saying he eschewed name-calling, insults, and abuses. In a tweet, he said that, quote, the use of subterfuge by people masquerading as obedience to abuse and insult eminent personalities like most reverend pastor Enoch Adeboye or anyone else is most unacceptable. Obedience are by and large law-abiding citizens, end of quote. He went on to say that while differences of opinion and normal calculated efforts to create ethnic or religious chasm all in the name of politics should not in any way be tolerated. He also warned that political opposition deploys such methods to gain undue advantage and create confusion and bad blood. Note that Obi is currently challenging the victory of the president-elect Bola Tinubu at Nigeria's election tribunal. Recall that the Labour Party presidential candidate allegedly came third during the 2023 presidential election as announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Nigerians have accused INEC of corruption and massive rigging in favour of the ruling party. That's our final story on this edition of the SWBN News Watch. A Christian school in Germany is contesting the country's restrictive educational system after government officials rejected a request for accreditation. The Association for Decentralized Learning provides online and homeschooling programs established on Christian values. The school's request for accreditation was denied despite meeting all state mandated requirements and curricula in 2014. They were also denied permission to begin offering in primary and secondary education opportunities. The government argued that peer socialization, a crucial component of education, was less likely with hybrid learning. Meanwhile, the German Constitutional Court dismissed a final domestic appeal last year after attorneys filed a lawsuit over the inaction in 2017 and presented their case in three consecutive hearings. The Association for Decentralized Learning has now brought this case before Europe's uh, highest Human Rights Court. The Alliance Defending Freedom, International ADF, a faith-based advocacy group, is defending the school, which asserts that Germany's rigid educational system violates parental rights and educational freedom. In a press release, 
Felix Bowman, director of European Advocacy for ADF International, stated that, quote, the right to education includes the right to embrace innovative approaches like hybrid school learning. Unquote. He went on to assert that Germany has one of the most stringent educational systems in the world when it comes to the demand of physical presence. The denial of recognition to an innovative school founded on Christian principles is a serious issue that the court should investigate. In his very words, by restricting this educational model, the state is violating the right of German citizens to pursue an education that conforms with their convictions. Reacting to this development, Tobias Remen Schneider, pastor of the Evangelical Reformed Baptist Church in Frankfurt, Germany, told the Daily Wire that Christian parents would like to have more control over what their children are exposed to. Moreover, the leader of the Association for Decentralized Learning, Jonathan Erz, made it known that their school offers families quality education that satisfies each student's unique learning needs and promotes academic success. The school also argued that students who enroll in the program continue to achieve greater standardized test scores than their counterparts who attend government-run institutions. At this point, please share your thoughts on how the restrictive educational system in Germany affects Christian parents and their homeschooling efforts. Now we've come to the end of this edition of the SWBN's Watch. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Till we meet next Thursday, 9 p.m. I remain Chimla Chike. See you next time. And don't forget to check out the lead concert and other refreshing programs on SWBN TV.